Well, Wendy. Here we are. Episode two. Our second one. Our second podcast. And it's been quite a week. We've had some lovely comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's a new, I mean, there's so many podcasts out there. Yeah. And everyone wants to do a podcast. I think they're a great way of mm -hmm. getting information across. And people just like to have a little general chit chat into sort of yeah. ordinary people's lives, I think. Well, you know, not that we're ordinary. And Henry's joined us today. Yes, Henry. Hello, Henry. Who has decided to... Uh, and if, if there's any crazy noise, you know it's going to be vamp. Yeah, vamp you? the cat. After last week. Yes. Um, but uh, So we, th we thought today that we talk about a subject that's, that's how we met and very dear to our hearts. Very dear to our hearts. It's a very important subject. It is. Especially quite topical right yes, now. Yes. It's been... I said it in last week's podcast. Uh, it's been my constant companion over the years. Yeah. And we're going to go and talk about... Doctor Who. Doctor Who. And this is something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted because I I see a lot of male people talk about it, like you know on on YouTube and stuff you know, but not a lot of females. I mean, they're obviously the ratios they changed are. in the last fifteen yeah. years. It's really a lot of women. Yeah. But I know what you mean, especially yeah. people doing reaction videos and Absolutely. all that kind of thing. Especially yeah. reaction videos to the classic series, which I was brought up on and you were brought up on. Yeah. Although I do love the. Uh, the, mostly the new series, I absolutely love it. Um, so my question, Wendy, when do you? What's your earliest memory of Doctor Who, and why did you? Did it resonate with you? Um, well, it would have been probably around. I was born in seventy, so it would have been around seventy three. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Hard to believe, kids. Hard to believe. Thanks, Mum, Dad. Always say that. Um, so actually, me as well. My brother and sister used to watch John Pertwee, mm -hmm. and I wasn't really supposed to watch it. Right. So I would come in and I'd hear... So the classic behind the sofa was Yeah, I was. was there. But I think the first one I actually remember seeing is the um, the devil one in the church. Carry on. I've got the, something to add to that. The devil one in the church. A funny looking devil looking... Bok. You know, he looked like some sort of Azal. lizard. Az that was Bok. Uh, Azal, you're thinking of. Azal. And, uh, and I remember... All born in Wiltshire. I've done videos from there. I remember watching that thinking, this is this is weird. Um, so that was kind of my initiation into it, you know, hearing it and seeing it. And my brother used to have, or my sister had, a John Pertwee little car, like the Bessie. Bessie. Yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, fascinated. And we used to have this little Dalek that rolled up and down the back of the car, which was kind of fun. But really, I suppose, you know, then I watched Tom Baker because he was in it for such a long time and I, I liked him. and. But for me, Doctor Who really became a major thing in my life with Peter Davison. He was my doctor. That's really interesting. We've, there's a little bit of a parallel which we've yeah. never discussed before. The earliest Doctor Who show I remember is the one you've just oh, mentioned. Wow. It's The Demons. I didn't know that. Yeah, The Demons in 1971. Um, I was actually at Allbourne only two years ago where, where it was filmed it's a, on my way down to Avebury it's a village called uh, Allbourne which mm. where Devil's End was supposed to be Yeah. so um, I'm glad I can pick up on things and actually tell Wendy the, what the episodes are called I didn't know that yeah, the demon, yeah so uh, that was nice so it was full film there the um, majority of the location where it was, was shot there mm -hmm. And then, you know, yeah, big fan of during the 70s, Tom Baker, you know, he's pretty, still much the definitive. Bill yes. Baker, who's the definitive doctor, he always yeah. say he's either Tom Baker or David Tennant, you yeah. know, um, yeah. both great. Mm. Um, to me, it's Tom all the way through, you know, but D David, fantastic as well. But then when fandom really kicked in, I was never really part of the fan scene, yeah. you know, although I did a documentary called Fans many years later, um, I was never part of the fan scene and the Doctor Appreciation Society. I, I never was. remember that. Well, you remember that? I was a member. I, yeah. I think I joined I had it from the about, badge, proudly. Yeah. Um, and also, I, I, I've interviewed people who, who started that. Um, in 1976, that was, wasn't it? Um, but with me, the fandom side, the real getting into it, was with Peter Davison. Yeah. Because I think the key thing was, by that point, we got a video recorder. And one of the very first mm. Doctor Who stories I ever recorded... In 1981, who remembers the five phases of Doctor Who? Repeated on BBC Two. Mm. It was in between Tom Baker's last season and Peter Davison's new season because there was an 18-month break. Oh, and they wanted to reintroduce <clears throat> viewers to the concept mm. of Doctor Who because Tom had been playing mm. it for so long. They showed stuff from William Hartnell. There was the Crotons from Patrick Troughton's mm. era. Mm. Uh, was it the Sea Devils, I think, from John Pertwee? So, yeah, it's really that. And that's led me into, sort of, oh, OK, now we're getting really into it. So through the 80s, I was a real full-on Who fan. I mean, but at the same time... 
I wouldn't say I was, a, I, was a, I was a geek. Well, I was a little bit, but I was also going to gigs. I'm really into music, so I was yeah. really going to gigs all the time. So into really sort of oh, no, cool bands. I was bands. a gig. I, yeah. knew, I, I had the books, and I could tell you the companion and how long they were they there for yes, when they did. left. And but the reason I think I I liked Peter Davison so much was because he brought a very emotional side to the Doctor, a softer side. Although Troughton, you know, Patrick Troughton had had similar. Thanks, Henry. Uh, Patrick Troughton had, had moved, you know, had that. Peter Davison, to me, had brought that kind of... He was a bit of a romantic yeah. figure. He was very, you know... And especially when um, Tegan left. He was now obviously coming up into yeah. the... Uh, 60, the she was my favourite companion and has remained, Fielding, my, yeah. has remained... Her and Catherine Tate are my favourite yeah. companions because they're ballsy Tate's women. Tate's brilliant. Tate's um, brilliant. But Tegan was great because, A, she had the leather skirt. And the hills, and as a young girl, I was really influenced by that. And um, still, are, darling. Yes, darling, still am. And also because she was ballsy, and when she left, and you know, she actually was said goodbye. In, yeah. As it refer- it stopped it, being fun, Doctor. She said it stopped it, being fun, Doctor. It was uh, resurrection, resurrection of the Daleks. Resurrection of the Daleks. That's right. Matthew she, Robinson, she came back, and he had gone. I can't help it if you say something. I'll tell you the year and the, put the director. Yeah. How sad is yeah. that? Interesting, you say that. Um, with Peter Davison, one of my he's right up there with my top in my yeah. top three or four. Um, and I first met him in 1982, just mm-hmm. become the Doctor, and we went to Forbidden Planet Two. Oh, that only just okay. recently re- opened in just off um, uh, in central London, around the corner from the old original Forbidden Planet. Mm-hmm. And he was doing a signing of Peter Davison's Book of Alien Monsters oh. in costume, and I still oh. got it. I still signed. I'm not into autographs. I point you out. I'm not into autographs. But back then, you know, you're a kid, so it's different. Mm. And then years later, I was very fortunate to do a, a big finish mm. audio with mm. Peter Davison called Singularity in 2005. So that's good. actually work. So actually, I'm sort of part of Doctor Who continuity. You are a tad, How about that? just a tad, How about but you're that? there. Yeah, my very minor role is, is part I of Doctor Who continuity. I actually met Peter Davison twice. Um, I met him with Sandra Dickinson, who was his first wife. Well, Sandra Dickinson, I've literally, I work in a theatre and we just had a tour. Um, of um, I can't remember what it was now, but literally last week, yeah. Sandra Dickinson was it was in the show. She was incredibly yeah, sexy, yeah, blonde, in lovely that, in the outfit in Hitch- yeah. Hitchhiker's Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy Trillion. Yeah. But, but they were in a they were in a show called Barefoot in the Park in Fairfield Halls in Croydon, and it was one of the last shows that my parents ever were together and took and took me to because I begged yeah. them, and so we he kind of signed some autographs, and then. Then they came to open a fate in Bellington Park. And I went down there and, uh, and, and I met them. And I was like, oh, you know, I was really into him. And, um, and I remember at that time, there was, they, were going, they were doing horse rides around the park. And, my, and I went missing. <laughs> and when my mum found me, she found me cuddling the back leg of a horse. And they were all going, don't upset the horse. Oh, in case it flipped. Yeah, but oh, I was very, God, very lucky. Be... But that's a memory I have. So I met him and I thought he was amazing so when he left I cried before you carry on you know, when I was talking to Sandra Dickinson last week yeah. or the week before it was she said she came back to the theatre where I work and she said you know it was so nice of her to come back she goes although she's a little bit mm, him but she says oh yes I did I did panto here with um, him you know her <laughs> ex I don't think they get on too well now um, as you do yeah. but she, yeah she brought her a lot of memories for, for her it was really yeah. nice she um you know, she was very lovely. They both were. Um, but when he left, I cried. And then when... And it was awful It's still the best regeneration, apart oh, from 10 into 11. Well, I thought they were great regeneration. No, you see, I have to disagree with that, and I'll come to that why. But when Colin Baker took over, I felt... I actually feel... Really, as a, Looking back, I feel, oh, I feel sorry for him now. Because, A, his costume was not his choice. <laughs> Nathan Turner. <clears throat> yeah, he it wasn't his choice. He didn't get great storylines. No, which he's redeemed in the Big Finish yeah. audios, which he's done really... For those who don't know, Big Finish is a company since 1999 that has produced audio plays yeah. with all the original Doctors. All BBC licensed, it's all mm. continuities all there, and they're really good. And I've done a, a couple of them as well. Yeah, and I mean, he, he had... I mean, he had the, the. I remember him having the black cat, and I felt really sorry for him because he was treated so badly... In the end, yeah. like he didn't even. We won't get into up. the politics of his, his but, firing. I mean, he didn't even get know. the regeneration, so we've no. had to have that gap, wasn't there? There was that he, gap. He was asked to go back in time and the Rani do a regeneration into Sebastian McCoy, and he refused. And I totally agree. I absolutely I, agree. I met Colin a few times; a lovely guy, and I thought, don't I totally understand mm. his reasoning? Yeah, Michael Grade, and <laughs> um, and and then when obviously 
you know, Sylvester McCoy took over. Yet again, I liked him, but I couldn't take to the series. What I find really interesting, when you look at the late 80s Doctor Who, um, no, no, don't... Oh, look, look the, cat, gonna the, trash. Cat, the cat's going to trash He's it. back. Uh, the cat is Luke back. Is back. Um, if you look at the eight, late... It's funny, it also applies to the Star Wars prequels. Look yeah. at the <clears> late <throat> 80s Doctor Who. It got <clears> slammed <throat> at the time. Look, yeah. quality was, was waning. But it's now look back at the classic era. I know. And it's not. You look at some of the stories, and they're really... Time of the Rani is still one of the worst Doctor Who stories yeah. ever, but also one of the best Doctor Who stories, The Curse of Fenric. And also, every time Ace went, Ace, I used to just think, oh, my God. Yeah. Right? Would you I really... Mean, so, Phil, was also back for the uh, centenary But it's, again, it's the writing, yeah. you know, at, at yeah. the time. So when, but, so when they said they were bringing it back with Paul McGann, you know, I was like... We went to um, <sighs> Uptown for a signing... Uh, when the when the uh, video was released, I think before the broadcast. No, mm. just after the broadcast, when I got it signed by is H M V in Leicester Square, and we got signed by Jeffrey Sachs, the um, uh, director. It was a really good little, little event. There it was like midnight. Mm. It was a midnight screening, uh, midnight sale. I don't know how we got up there. We must have driven up there. But it's interesting you said that. You know, it's been a constant companion because I remember being a kid and going through tough times in my life. <clears throat> and and you know and literally i would turn to my doctor who i would shut myself away in my room read the books listen i would actually take it off the telly yeah the listen, old audio tapes and listen yeah, yeah. and i do it little plays word for word which i think probably that helped me become you know loving theater and all that stuff as well and for you it's not the kind of when you look at you now <clears throat> and you you know it's mm. not, you, you, you say a Doctor Who fan is maybe a teenager isn't yeah. it? you don't fit that image of a girl Doctor Who fan thank you yeah, I like to break the mould <laughs> darling um, but yeah you know, it's very interesting very interesting and it was you know I used to I mean my parents divorced early and you know life was a bit turbulent and so around the time of you know 7 to 14 you know it was a companion you know, I, I had his, um, I had the, I found photographs the other day of like Peter Davison, um, uh, Tegan and, um, oh, I've forgotten his name, Mark, Mark, Strip, Mark Strickson. yeah, I did, he was in that big finish. I yeah, did. yeah, I had, and Turlo, you know, I had mm. the pictures of them on the wall and it was like, they were my friends. And when I was going through that tough time, they kept me company. And so I, when you said that as a constant companion and even now, in moments where I'm low or I don't feel well or something like that, I will turn to Doctor Who. And I, and now it's more, I mean, yes. I, 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 you say you turn to Doctor Who, what do you turn to? The classic or the, or the new series? Um, or both? That's a good question. I would probably say there are certain episodes I turn to. I mean, literally the yeah. other day. I mean, I loved things like Genesis of the Daleks, yeah, very and good. I literally was at Betworth. Fantastic. I was at Betworth this week doing a vlog for my my YouTube channel, and I was at the quarry mm. that was filmed Genesis of the Daleks. Mm. Filmed at, you know. I know it's for I've known for years that's the quarry because I go there because of walking. Mm. But yeah, do that little. Bit. Oh, it's a scar room. Do I have? The right to yeah yeah, yeah. It's classic classic Absolute and I classic. like the way how they brought that back later on in the yeah. series as in well in Journey's End and all that yeah. you know um, but I mean for me it was like you know I'll come back to what episodes I go to because I mean Paul you know Paul McCann wonderful actor I really feel he was I've got a feeling he's in a movie that I'm uh, sorry uh, something I'm an acting job I'm involved in I've got a feeling he might be in it. He's lovely. Yeah. So yeah, I've heard. Yeah. And the, um, he's he was kind of stitched up because he should have been the doctor. You know. He well, no, that, come that back. wasn't that. I mean, of the whatever short fallings of the TV movie yeah. war, it wasn't on he's, Paul McGann. Sure. No, he not, not really. He, he owned was, it straight away. He was brilliant, and I I think he should have had his own series yeah. and still should have and his that, series in the uh, 50th anniversary mini yeah. episode when he came back what, in, in the night of the doctor. His costume. Yeah. So cool. Well, no one. They kept that so secret. No one's expected that. But not that, the one you expected. Yeah. Oh, blue am I? And Paul McGann just doesn't ever age. No. Um, he's wonderful. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, Christopher Eccleston took over and then, you know... Right, fantastic. I, I loved him. Love Chris Eck. I have to say the one thing that still sticks in my throat is the whole love element with the Doctor. I'm not a bit... I mean, I understand that, they're, mm -hmm. that you know, I, I don't really want to see the companions falling in love with the Doctor all the time because for me it's about the show. And, and I realise that in human, in human world that probably could happen. They could fall in love with someone like him but it well, just makes it if you look it, back I even Ziana Merton was flirting was it Ziana Merton mm. in the 
William Hartnell episode yeah. was flirting with the Doctor yeah. a little bit, old Hartnell. Yeah. You know, but I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah. it, it's a bit, ah, <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I love Hartnell. Um, it's interesting. Was, was a very, I mean, without Patrick Trout, imagine if Patrick Trout had failed, right? We, to me, it's not so much Hartnell. you have very good point there. Yeah. It's really Troughton who he, carried on the he legacy. Did. He, if he had failed, we wouldn't have had Doctor Who, I don't think, because he had a, so much on his back to actually. I've got to. I've got to do this yeah. because otherwise, everything we've achieved has gone down the swan. You're absolutely right, Zoe. He's wonderful. Um, I met Patrick Troughton, a lucky enough. His run, very rare convention appearance in 1985 at Brighton Convention for the Doctor Appreciation Society. I'd love to. Have I went there. My friend Mark Stammers was one of the members then, mm. and I met him. Uh, he signed he signed my book. I've got Patrick Trout's autograph, Aww. which is worth quite a lot of money now. I've not been having um, tattoos yeah. of all their signatures. Sorry, I don't do. I, this is only one of the few times I do uh, um, autographs. And we were queuing up, and I came up to him. I was a little bit nervous because I was only like sure. 16. Mm. Hello, Joe. Oh, you spell your name with a Q? Why, why is that? Uh, mm. you know, I said, oh, it's just, no, also, I was about 19, 18, 19. And uh, I said, oh, I just, I just changed it last year because my friend thought it'd be cool. Or something like that, you know. Um, that's a sad story, isn't it? Yeah, hold up. I hold up the entire queue because I don't want to know why I've got a queue in my but name. If they, if they ask you something like that, you, you're going to have that conversation, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Especially because you're It's hero. interesting because obviously now I'm working, I've been working in theatre for 27 years. I don't really get starstruck. Yeah. You know, uh, can you get to see people go, oh, I really admire your work. I think mm. I said that about Rick Mayle. Um, when he was doing the New Statesman, a couple mm. of the New Statesman. But yeah, with who, you know, I've had Doctor Who actors coming in. I've had some Hollywood a list coming through. But it's, you're just like, yeah. There's, I think there's a few of them. I mean, I, I, I'm i coming to him, so I'll... But, um, but the, you know, Eccleston and then on to Tennant. I, I loved Eccleston. I thought he was wonderful and I thought he brought an edge to it. And Dalek re- remains to me. Robert Sherman's Dalek. One yeah. of the, the best ever. In, well, it's one of the shows that I will turn to is Dalek mm. because, you know, you see the Dalek change and, and transform. Robert Sherman, your Facebook friend, if you see this, we're complimenting all Yeah, it's, it's such a wonderful. Great episode. You know, and, and I've shown a lot of people that episode that weren't Doctor Who fans that have actually watched it and gone. That was a, that was an amazing one. So that's one of the shows that I will watch. Um, and there's quite a few like how they brought the whole Big Brother thing at the end and how we. Oh, I didn't like that. The only thing that's sorry, I, like I that. love Russell T Davis. The only thing I nothing dates Doctor Who mm. by having something that's huge in popular in popular culture at that time. They make the other thing. Now it's dated. But yeah, but may you say that? But looking back at the classic series, you could say that was dated because of this. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Pacific th- marketing things. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it was. Of course, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 but he yes, did it so well. Few occasions he, he I sat walked... down and he was like, "Right, I'm going to find my way." Out. He was. I loved that. I mean, that was a really, and the whole regeneration because he brought that back in. But Tennant, obviously, every. I mean, first of all, he's, he's David Tennant. He's gorgeous and he's very, very good at what he totally, does. Totally, totally owned the Doctor. It's interesting you know. now having actors playing the part who are huge Doctor Who fans. Mm. I think it's Tennant who got, or it's either Tennant or Capaldi who got into acting because of Doctor Who. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely fascinating. And and one of the other ones I watched of uh, that helps me get through is Turn Left. Great episode with that Catherine. Is yeah, yeah, wonderful. And and, and it's a, such a great, uh, so much emotion, you know, because she realizes, you know, and and all the time is like there's something on her back. She's wonderful. I mean, Catherine Tate brought so much. Um, humour like when she's doing the thing on through the through the, the window and he's talking to her and she's brilliant. like sorry I'm yeah. really interrupting great her. editing great acting brilliant and, and I'm gutted that they only really had a short time because she and Pompeii wasn't it the, well she's coming back in anyway, what was the one the Pompeii one Fires of Pompeii Shh, that was brilliant. now obviously you're coming Capaldi, up to yeah. him and then we come to the lovely Matt Smith oh so Matt Smith is in my top five I think Matt Smith absolutely nailed that part absolutely everyone was like what, a 26-year-old playing the Doctor? Sorry, Peter Davison was only 29 when he got the role as well. He absolutely nailed it. But I think Smith, you know, Matt Smith, he came into his own... one, he's, he, 10 years later, he still looks the same. Towards the last... His costume came into the last... You know, the long yes, coat. Yes, yes. And um, now he's in, obviously, the, the new game, House of the Dragon, isn't he? Yeah. Game of Thrones. Oh, that'd be interesting. fabulous. Yeah. So I like Matt, and, and, and one of his... Um, but I can't say... I mean, obviously, the one that really comes to me is A Christmas Carol. Because that whole... The young boy, how he went back mm-hmm. and showed him... And you, how he's... No, he's, she's going to die, but he has that last Christmas with her. For someone 
it's a last Christmas somewhere. I mean, that just really came home. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. You great. Know, because, I mean, the Christmas you know, specials have been really, let's be frank, quite often. Yeah. Oh, I've seen it once. That's enough. Yeah. You know, uh, but that's one of the highlights. Yeah. It was, it was wonderful. But obviously, I, I'm coming to my favourite now because obviously... We've actually been quite positive. We haven't yeah. slagged anything off yet. Capaldi. Oh, uh, if ever guy was born to play the role, it was him. When and he when got, he came out for that reveal. Oh my I god! Almost, I cried. I almost shot a load. I cried. I absolutely cried <laughs> because it was that? like finally yeah, he did. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big thick of it fan. Now. Thick of it fan. That's um, going to be like yeah, your claim to fame. Yeah, um, I shot a load. But um, he yeah. is such. Uh, when he came out and he did the old, you know, the mm. pose, I cried because I thought finally Doctor Who is getting. Uh, an act, and I'm not But with the horrible. world society now, you'd never be able to get a 50 year old white male playing the doctor ever again, or not for a few years, because everything's gone wonderful. so woke. I'm looking forward to the new doctor, I think he'll be fabulous. Yeah. Got no problem well, with it at all. With not Russell. if it'll be really um, borderline racist I th- about I it. I think. It's disgusting. With Capaldi, he, what I didn't like about that is that they. they it was a bit of ageism there when he first come in and they brought in Matt to say like, you know... Well, Capaldi was the oldest actor to play the role. But he's, he was wonderful. And when he did, um, oh my God, um, uh, Shepherd's Boy, you know, that day, that was wonderful. You know, when he was kept hitting the, the, the diamond mountain trying to get through I'm it. really stupid. I don't understand the episode. Even now, I've watched oh, it a few times. I wonderful. don't get it. Well, he's fighting. I'm not saying it's a bad episode. I don't understand it. Because he was fighting his own fears. Yeah, of, I got you know, that. Wonderful. It's just, it's just, I he, don't know. He put so much, you know, every time he kept going. It's like Groundhog Day, wasn't it? He just Until he actually got to a point where he was ready, you know. Um, and I just, I just thought he was the most heartfelt. And he was like, I don't think I'm a cuddling one. And in the end, he became that. And and it became a bit like I've watched the series again recently because when I first watched it, I thought this is like the Clara show. But now I've watched it again, they actually were, e- they were quite equal with each mm. other. And yeah, um, Jenna Collins is in the new Sandman series. It was really interesting. You know, and then when she left and he got um, bit, um, Bill, I loved Bill Potts. She was great. Paul she Mackie, was fantastic. Wonderful. What a great companion. Yeah. And then Matt and I love, Lucas. Tell me, I love Jenna Coleman as well. Yeah. Um, brilliant. But yeah, Paul Mackie was fantastic. And then Matt Lucas yeah. came in. And I, th- I love seeing him differently. I have to say, being a woman, the master being Missy, she's wonderful. Oh, I love her ever since uh, Amazing. in uh, uh, Green Wing. But yeah. John Sims, to me, was the master. No. Roger Delgado was oh, the master. See, and, Roger and, Delgado. And Ailey, obviously, yeah. as well. But John Sims was so... And in the end, they actually made him darker yeah. with the beard yeah, and yeah. The, you know, But I thought he Although was Although it was a wonderful. rip-off of uh, uh, the episode uh, Zaha Doom from Babylon 5. Yeah. It was, it was almost the same character. But, uh, I mean, Derek... You know, Derek... Um, was it Jacob, Jacob B, wasn't Derek it? Jacoby, yes. Yeah, like... In Sound of Drums. Didn't, no, was it Sound of Drums? didn't see that coming, that no. he was the master. And no. then it turned into John Sims. I love the idea of the of the perception... Yeah. Gallifrey perception watch. And Martha, like. I mean, Martha, I thought she was an uh, amazing character. Yeah. She was really oh, good. Kind of, yeah, I really like Freema uh, in that role. Um, so I liked her as the companion. Oh, I, by the way, uh, Jodie Whittaker was the Doctor for a couple of years. Moving on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, sorry, we'll, we will address that. When, when Capaldi, when he came out, I cried. Yeah. Right, here we go. Because that episode of the First World War, I actually watched it with an ex-boyfriend of mine who was not a Hoovian. And he watched it because, you know... What, twice a, uh, was it Twice Upon a Time? Yeah. Brilliant And episode. he watched it and he cried because of the whole World War thing. And he said to me, that was... I'll watch it again. So yeah. he actually turned a, a non hoovian into some... So I would say, for me, Capaldi... And when he does that final speech, he's, and they actually let him add lip a lot of that. And when he says, Doctor, I let you go, yeah. that was him. What saying, a beautiful line. Wonderful. Doctor, I'll let you know. I'll let you go. That's actually on my Instagram. Yeah. I'd never be cruel, never be cowardly. Mm. You know, love, uh, love, uh, hate, love is always wise, hatred is always foolish. That's on my Instagram thing. That's very cool. Yeah. My one is, uh, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. Yeah. Ian Brown, Stone Roses. And then we have to sort of talk about Jodie. Sorry, not a fan. Not a fan of, sorry, yeah. not Jodie. No, Jodie's herself. great. Jodie's fine as a doctor. I did I have a problem with the female doctor and the gender training? I yes, did. I'm going to admit a little bit. I'm I sorry. Did, yeah. Why can't I have a male character and a female character? You have female time loss and male time loss. Yeah. But that's the way it went. Fine. Um, but yeah, not being a 
It's, no. it's not. It's not resonated with me. I'm sorry. Sorry, no. Chris Chibnall. Um, it just didn't resonate with me. What I, I tell you things that I, and I tell time, you... was it the timeless twaddle? I mean, the timeless yeah. children. Well, she's going to get completely. Russell T Davis, please just ignore all that. And do you know, it's a little, it's a little story. Um, I actually met Russell T Davis in Hampton Court, and I, um, and I actually said to him, "This is going back when Capaldi had just been, um, just just been, uh, you know, accepted as the Doctor," and I said, "Please come back." How and weird. He, and he looked at me and he laughed. He said, do you know how many people say that to me? And I said, please come back because as much as, and I, you know, Stephen Moffat writes some great stories. Yeah, great Moffat, yeah. He's coming back for the new I series. I absolutely it. didn't. I don't think he could hold a whole series. He could do some really good um, episodes, but not the whole um yeah, the rumour that Stephen Moffat is actually writing a few episodes for the new series with Under Russell Deere. He's brilliant. And they're, the episodes, they're in conversation like with Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Uh, BBC are in, in conversation with Disney+, yeah. Plus to stream it on Disney+. Plus. Wow. But I, I said to him, are you, gonna, are you ever going to come back? And he said, never say never, but I've got no plans to. And Stephen Moffat was there that day. Let's just say, out of the two of them... Russell was very friendly. Yeah. And I met Peter Capaldi very, very briefly. Incredibly shy man. Mm. Incredibly friendly. Lo- very lovely. And he even did the old, you know. Yeah. Um, he was amazing. And then obviously now when it went into Jodie, I was, I never wanted Doctor Who to be a woman. And I'm a woman. I always believe that Doctor Who should be a man. But that's just me. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm sort of with you on that. And I, I I'm, like Jodie as an actor. I apologise for it. But yet again, there's another accent. Um, and um, up north again, and and that's fa- fair enough, you know. Fair yeah, good enough. It's the second actor who's Scottish to play the Doctor. But I thought it was too politically correct. I've got to be honest. What's the BBC for you? That's woke. It was too. We've got to do it this. We've got to do it that. We've got to do that. And I was like, just just be Doctor Who. Just enjoy it. You know, an episode. You can still be right. Mind you, no one's ever failed in the part. No one's really failed. No. Um, no one's really mm. failed in the part. Mm. Uh, Mainly, mainly no one's really fouled in the part, but that's not really down to their fault. Um, but I'm interested to see the future. Well, you know... There's a good place to round it up, actually. I'm, I'm actually th- interested in how Jodie's going to come out, but there are other couple of Doctors, actually, we've forgotten. One was um, Peter Cushing. Well, there, yeah, uh, the two Dalek films in the 1960s, Doctor and the Daleks. It was quite Dalek interesting Invasion watching Earth. him. Hello, I'm Doctor Who. He yes. was very... And, and I love... Peter Cushing. Yeah. Peter Cushing is one of my favourite actors yeah. of all time. And then, if you remember the the light, was it um, um, comic relief one? Oh yeah, the Curse of the Fatal Death. I actually Rowan thought Atkinson. that um, Hugh Grant and what was the other guy, Richard? Well, don't you know the story about that? What's his name? The other one? I forget his name. He was the other. He, he, oh god, the tall guy. The tall. Oh, uh, Richard E. Grant. He well, he been, played it in the in the screen of the Chuck, and he was in Doctor Who as well. Yeah, he would have been an amazing. Yeah, and would. also David Morrissey would have been an amazing Doctor. Yeah. I'd have loved to have seen David Morrissey. Do you know the Hugh Grant story? Tell me. Russell T. When Doctor was being relaunched with Christopher Eccleston, right, yeah. but before going through people, it was actually offered to Hugh Grant, and he turned it down. Yeah, and Hugh Grant said he actually regrets that now. So, in conclusion, mm-hmm. um, Wendy, what what's your love? Sum up to me, Doctor Who, in three words. Oh, that's a very difficult. Um, friend um, oh my god friend um, com- well it's the same as companion isn't it I want to be a companion um, so um, well you should have been if I'd known you back in 1991 when we did my Doctor Who fan film I, I, Resurrection I, of Evil it was I would called. have wanted to be Capaldi Capaldi's companion please um, you know friend and um, you know my my uh, my my hope in the dark lights because you know when you can't when you can't sleep or it's you know you're in a dark period yes. in your life it brings a bit of brightness in yeah. there and also it made me interested in science fiction and, yeah. and what's st- out there I mean I'm a big Star Trek fan I'm, so big, really, I'm really into that. cosmology um, so that's really good what my three you? my three words quite easy my constant companion yeah. throughout my entire life. Doctor Who's been the constant. Mm-hmm. I, I, when you, I, the last couple of years I've gone off it. I'm not saying I haven't gone off it, but I don't watch it as much as I used to. If you could be any Doctor, yeah. Oh, which one ooh. would you be? Oh. Now there's a question for you, Hurtley. sir. Really? Why? Because it's the first Doctor I, I remember. Okay. Pertwee or... I? All right, there we go. Pertwee or Matt Smith. And why would you pick Matt? I thought his energy. 
He just he just got the doctor. He just got it. He he knew it's about. What about you? Oh my god. Um, you remember you got to step into a, a man's body. Okay. And, uh, this is Whitaker. Uh, yes, well, I've got the hair of Whitaker, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I like Jodie. Because you're my fam. I'm fam. I actually like Jodie, as in, in Henry, thanks very much. I, I actually like her, but I think it would be Capaldi. And I think the, the other doctor would be. Um... <coughs> Davison. No, no, it wouldn't. I actually think I'd probably pick something like um, Eccleston. Yeah, cool. Or um, a bit of Tennant because they had that darkness in them, and that appeals to my nature. Those, those kind, of, um, and and McCann was kind of soft mm. in some ways. So that, but definitely Capaldi, I think. Cool. Yeah, I and he had a know. great outfit. He was yeah. so steampunk. Yeah, steampunk. Boom, and very that's cool. sexy, yeah. right? And you could see me as that. So there you go, guys. What's your favourite Doctor? And companion. And companion. And what Doctor would you be? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Hope you enjoy it. We'll probably will come back to other podcasts on we, Doctor Who. Yeah, because someone... it's such a big subject. Yeah, it's a big We're subject. We're trying to fill it in in a short time. Um, yeah. Um, hope you enjoyed this little yeah, podcast. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been great, hasn't it? And, and the wine has been Wine there. has been drunk. Uh, it's always good. Us. He's abandoned us. He's now. abandoned us now. He said, "Oh God!" As soon as we mentioned Jodie Whittaker, he went. I think um, we should end this podcast. We need to, you know, with a bit of Doctor Who music or something like that. I can't because you get a copyright oh, strike. Right. You're just going to have to hum it. Yeah. We right. won't do that. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Please watch on the, your favourite you, podcast platforms. Yeah. Um, on Spotify, Amazon Music. And uh, we'll see you next time. On Strangely Us. Strangely Us podcast. Take care.